five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. It is it never not impressive. That was the SpaceX Dragon it taking off. It is, we both <laughs> have goosebumps. We are about to do our first ever interview from space. Uh, joining us will be NASA astronauts Doug Hurley, Bob Benkin, and Chris Cassidy. They're all on board the Dragon right now, so let's get started. Station, this is live with Kelly and Ryan. How do you hear me? Live with Kelly and Ryan, this is uh, Chris, Bob, and Doug. Welcome to the International Space Station. We have you loud and clear. Wow. How is it going up there? This is the most nervous I've ever <laughs> been doing an interview. How are you? Well, you're doing great, Kelly. Keep it up. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you uh, gladly. But uh, we're doing fantastic. We're very, we've had a, a wonderful two months as the, together as a three-person crew. It's, it's uh, sad for me to see Bob and Doug depart this weekend. We've got some, some weather that we're watching. Uh, so God willing, they'll, they'll get, get off uh, on time. But we're, we've uh, had a fantastic uh, uh, stay together. So you're, you're going to stay for another couple months. They're they're leaving, but you're going to stay on board. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I arrived uh, in in April with two Russian cosmonauts on a, on a Soyuz, and we were here for a few months before Bob and Doug arrived, and uh, and we depart in in October. And it was really quite special to see to fly right over the Kennedy Space Center two minutes before they launched, and to know that they were. Uh, uh, making a beeline to rendezvous with us the next day. I'm noticing this little uh, sparkly dinosaur floating in the f in the foreground there. Um, <laughs> that's very cool. Oh, oh wow! wow. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. Oh, Never gets man. old. Um, so how, since there is no gravity, obviously, how are you staying so still? Well, Kelly, uh, it's a, a good question for us, and we've got our feet locked into some foot restraints on the on the ground, and so you can see uh, if we don't lock ourselves in, we'll just uh, float float right away. So we've been practicing that for the last two months, and Doug and I just about have it down uh, as well as Chris does. Of course, he's been here a little bit longer. Uh, and you mentioned our, our little dinosaur, the little Apatosaurus that our sons selected for us to be able to demonstrate zero gravity even when we were locked in, had our feet uh, uh, locked to the floor or locked to the seats as we were headed uphill in Dragon. You know, nobody's kids think that they're cool, but I bet all of your kids think that you are extraordinarily cool. <laughs> I have to ask because these are questions that we keep getting asked by everyone. How do you go to the bathroom <laughs> when there is no gravity? Well, th that is a question we often get. And uh, I think the, the best way to answer it is it, it takes a little more time uh, and you have to be very particular and uh, very careful. Uh, and other than that, it is similar to Earth, but uh, as you mentioned, the, the effects of gravity greatly increase your chances for success on Earth compared to in space. So you just have to be pretty careful <laughs> while going about your business. How's the food up there, guys? Well, the food, none of us are picky eaters, although there's a few items we, I won't share with you that none of us like, and those, those always seem to be the last items left. But the food is really tasty. There's a food lab at the Johnson Space Center that, that uh, fixes it and, and sends it on up. There's some items that you can just buy in the grocery store, things that would have a long stay shelf life, uh, canned fish and that sort of thing. Um, but there's plenty of it. In fact, there's a lot of food up here currently, and uh, and we're we're never for a shortage of what to d decide to eat. Do you um, burn more calories in outer space, or <laughs> something? I'm always curious about. Like, is there a is there a is there a gravity thing that re that restricts your calories from sticking to your body? <laughs> I don't know if we have, uh, you know, some special things up here that kind of keep the calories burning off uh, uh, other than exercise, you know, just like it is back on Earth. One of the things that we have to do on orbit to maintain our health and our fitness uh, for our returns, 
uh, Doug and I will land in the water and we'll want to be in good shape for that in case we need to, you know, climb out of the capsule or, or something. And Chris's crew has that capability as well. And so we exercise for about two hours uh, every day with weightlifting and wow. either running or cycling on various equipment that's uh, been developed and, and honed up here on the International Space Station. And so I don't think there's anything magic about uh, our time on the International Space Station. Um, folks do come back in, in better health, typically better better physical fitness levels than when they launch. But it's really ascribed to that uh, two hours of exercise every day, just like it would be back home. Sorry, we don't have an easy answer. No, it's a great answer. No, but it's I think you're wrong. We, we think it is magic what you guys are doing. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, really special. What would you say is the most dangerous part of your job? Well, I think uh, generically the expectation from uh, most people is that uh, being an astronaut is a dangerous job. Uh, obviously, the launch and the uh, landing phases are pretty dynamic from a physics standpoint. You know, you go from zero to 17,500 miles an hour when you launch, and then when you return back to Earth, you have to slow down from 17,500 miles an hour to zero. So all that takes a lot of uh, engineering and technology to pull it off successfully. But I think, you know, the, the men and women of our military, uh, the fire departments, the police, all those folks have very risky jobs as well. And, and you just have to mitigate that risk with backup systems and procedures and plans and, uh, and training and uh, do your job and uh, everything will turn out fine. Now, Doug, I understand that you uh, grew up in a very small town in New York, and you actually grew up with one of our producers, Dana Dodge. Is it true that you know each other? Oh, yeah. When you uh, grow up in a town the size that we grew up in, I think you know almost everybody. There was just a few hundred people uh, back then, and uh, yeah, we went to school together. I think we were only one grade apart, and uh, yeah, Apple Lake in New York. So uh, wow. kind of cool that she's Small. been working there for many, many years, from what I understand. She really has. And uh, I mean, small galaxy, isn't it? I would say small world, <laughs> but from your, from your perspective, it's a small galaxy. <laughs> so um, very quickly, before we sign off here, what kind of uh, liquids can you drink in space? Can you have, like, is Coffee? there a cocktail hour in space? Well, it seems like we're we're drinking water all the time. Bob has a, a, a an example of our water bags here. They fly up as empty bags labeled drinking water for what you what it becomes when you put the water in there. And a bag of coffee empty is labeled coffee, so it turns into coffee when you uh, when you add the the water. And when Incredible. we consume this and go to the bathroom, kind of tying into the question you asked, Doug, that water we reclaim and it turns into tomorrow's drinking water. So we, we recycle um, quite a high percentage of, of, our, of our water up here, including condensate from our sweaty t-shirts. So he, here you can see an example of yesterday's coffee floating nice and cleanly in the, uh, <laughs> in the environment here. Uh, and every, every hour yes. is cocktail hour for, uh, for astronauts because you can drink That's balls of water fluid right out of the, of the, of the uh, air like that. Well, well, it was great talking yeah. to all of you, and uh, it was really thrilling for us. Good luck on the yeah. rest of your mission. Godspeed and a safe, safe re-entry, yeah. yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye, Take gentlemen. Care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. I mean, did you ever think? No, just end it now. End the show now. End it on a high note. I never thought that that would be possible. That's really I cool. am... I am stunned <laughs> at how thrilling that was. Yeah. Stunned. Oh, I just want to be an astronaut.